Let's try and understand parallel circuit rule one a little bit better. And rule one states that source voltage is applied to all legs of the circuit. And we already said that that means that if we had a 12 volt battery, then each load or each path would receive 12 volts. And the advantage of this is we can operate many, many devices and give them the full source voltage or the full voltage of the battery. So I could operate the starter with 12 volts if I gave it its own path. I could operate the headlights, the radio, the horn. On a car, there are many, many parallel circuits, as many as 50 to 100 or more, and they're all getting supply voltage applied to each of those individual paths so that they can run off of the proper voltage that they require, which in this case, in this example, we're talking about 12 volts. The other advantage of using a parallel circuit is that if there's a fault in one of the branches, like if there's a fault in this first path, like an open circuit or a high resistance problem, it won't affect the other path or the other paths on the car. But if the fault is in an area before it gets to the point where it splits up, like before it gets to this location, then if there was a fault there, it would affect all of the circuits on the car. So let's say you had a weak battery, it would affect all the circuits on the car. If you had high resistance in the positive battery cable or in this wire in this picture, it would affect all of the circuits on the car. If there was something wrong with the ground wire, it would affect all of the circuits on the car. But if the fault was in one of the paths, it would only affect that path. And that's if it's an open or a high resistance problem. So the key to remember is, we use parallel so that we can apply the source voltage to all of the different branches or legs of the circuit. And when we use series, it's because we want the different loads to share the voltage or to get a lower voltage than the source voltage. So there's reasons why we would use either one. But for the most part, a car uses mostly parallel circuits or a combination which is called a series parallel, which we'll learn in a more advanced course. So let's move on to rule number two.